relationship with Sierra Club, Open Space Authority, Peninsula Open Space Trust, uh, and with everyone else that's very much uh, part of preserving this in Thank you. Any other questions about anything? There's so much going on in the city. So the homeless stuff. I mean, right now we got yes, a Southside Community stuff. Center that's open for mobile homes. They'll open as a, a, a center for when it gets cold. Is there anything else in the district going to happen? Uh, nothing on the, nothing currently on the radar. So no. no little sheds or anything like that in our district yet? We or? can put them in here. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> your backyard this, or? this is the reality of the no, situation. No, we should do so. I mean, they're, they're in our neighborhood anyway. So I appreciate it. This is the reality of the situation. We have thousands of homeless individuals. We only have about 800 beds in the city of San Jose. So we're going to continue to clean them out of certain areas. They go around, they come back over here, we get calls about this, we clear them out, they go over here. And so fundamentally, something has to change. There are some council members that don't like talking about this because it's controversial, right? What do you do? You're, you're going to upset people whether you have this recommendation, that recommendation. The, what the approach I've taken, for example, is that uh, irrespective of what other council members do, other parts of the cities do, I think, and yesterday we had a meeting at the Southside Community Center. It was an open public meeting. It was jam-packed. A lot of people were there. I think upwards of 50 people. We were discussing uh, homelessness, housing, trying to educate folks as to where things are and what potential solutions exist. And so for, for me, in my view, is that's going to be a springboard for deeper conversations that I think we need to have as a community. Because we have, the last map I saw, we had about 200 homeless individuals here in District 2. Okay. And so the question I think we need to ask ourselves and begin having dialogue about on is what are we willing to do to get those folks off the street in our district? Irrespective of Willow Glen does something, downtown does something, whatever, right? We have our homeless residents, what are we willing to do? And so some of those conversations are going to start happening over the next few months. And in my view, it's with the premise, very strong underlying premise of, the status quo isn't working. We need to do something, and so and so that those conversations, uh, and I want everyone involved, including some of the homeless individuals. But those conversations are going to lead us down. They could have the potential to lead us down different paths, whether it's sex, why solution. I don't know what that is, uh, but those conversations I think need to be had sooner rather than later because the current situation isn't working, um, and we need to all step up and figure out what we as a community are willing to do to help solve it here. Uh, and so that's what. That's where I'm going to be leading in the coming months, in the plan. and it's going to take a little while. It's going to take time. Um, so I don't know what the exact solution is going to be. Please. How many of them, do we know how many of them actually want help and need help to get out? And then the ones that don't need it, or I'm sorry, the ones that don't want it, what do we do so, in that yeah. case? So, so one thing to understand, and, and I suspect many people know this already, but one thing to understand about the homeless population, they're as diverse as, diverse as this room. <laughs> They're homeless for, I've talked to many, many of them. They're homeless for a variety of different reasons. Some alcohol, some drugs, some mental health, some down on their luck, some husband and wife, their son died and they, they couldn't get their act you know, together, their family fell apart, you know, number of different reasons. For example, at Southside Community Center right now, just yesterday, Vanessa was telling me, and I saw the little kid come out of the car, is that there was a, there's a family there that's living in their vehicle. And Husband, wife, I saw one kid. I don't know how many kids are there, but those are the situations many people get themselves in. And certainly they're not in a tent, but that's the challenge, right? Um, and, so, and, so, and so what we need to understand is how do we start sort of disaggregating some of those folks that want help, that don't want help. But I, I I've come to believe, after much thinking and a lot of these conversations we have at City Hall, is that we don't have enough beds for people to clear them off the street, right? We clear them here, they go there. If... As an example, if we had enough beds for the 200 plus homeless that live here in District 2, then I think that would give the city, the police department, the moral authority to then say, John, you actually have a place to go. You cannot stay here. It's unacceptable. We as a, as a, as a community, as a city, are not going to allow it. And we're going to do everything possible to break down those barriers that prevent people from seeking shelter. And so not until we get to that point, I think we're going to continuously it's going to be challenging to filter out those people that truly want help because we just don't have places for everyone to go. And so currently right now, everyone's just, they're just it, it, homelessness. We just call it that. We model them all together and that's what they are. But there's obviously an element of criminality. There's obviously, you know, people doing bad stuff. Some of these same homeless individuals are preying on other homeless individuals, preying on the women that are homeless. 
dollars. I mean, it goes on and on, right? Uh, and so we just need to break down barriers. We need more beds. I mean, I heard the former uh, state senator, current mayor of Sacramento say it very well. It, it needs to be, we need to address the people, pets, property, right? Because those are the main impediments that prevent people from coming in. And so once we have enough beds, what are we doing to make certain that some of these folks don't have these barriers to go seek some of the service? And, and so those, that's my general thinking of it, uh, uh, but, but it's, it's complicated and that's the fundamental challenge is that we're dealing with a very sus large societal problem that I think has a lot of different reasons for its existence. And we're dealing with human beings. I mean, these are different complex people that have a lot of different interests and, and so I know it's a long answer, but it, it, no, I hope okay. it expresses my, my sentiment and the sense of things. Please. Totally different topic. The there was a meeting or a vote for the dispensaries near schools? I don't, that, no. no. Did you read anything about that? I heard it was Did at, you read it on next door? The 7 p.m. <laughs> city council? Yeah, right. Yeah. That city. was down in Morgan No, Hill. there was no. Was oh, Morgan yeah. Hill. Yeah. yeah, maybe that was, that, that was, was a, we have, we have strict restrictions. There are dispensaries around the city, as you all know. They're mostly concentrated in District 7 by McLaughlin and 101 area. That council member was a little upset because she's like, how the hell did this happen? Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but they're around. We have it limited, I think, at 16. Uh, and there are very strong sort of restrictions as to where they can be feet away from schools and things of that. So no, there, and there is no, I, I think I saw a comment on next door. There was a dispensary coming to where the old cars junior on the, Cottle, on the corner of Cottle and Beswick, or, or yeah, Beswick, I think it, so that is not true. There's Folks, a horizon there. Yeah. So you know what? We <laughs> we have to move on. I'm yeah. so sorry, but we are like I'll be here a little hour. while. Yeah. We're yeah. half hour behind schedule. Okay. Is nope. it a quick question? Oh, yeah, it's very important. Okay. I heard that the, everybody has beds, but I haven't heard anything about mental health beds. Yeah, so, 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 so the good question. So she says she hasn't heard anything about mental health beds as it relates to, so yes, that is an important part maybe I left out by accident. So the thought is if and when people, we have enough beds, people have a place to go, they, we need to provide them wraparound services to get them off, the, off their feet, whether it be therapy, mental health, you know, uh, medication, whatever it may be, certainly we need to address that because not until we address that, it, we're gonna continue in the same cycle. So there's not. No, there, there is, there is. Very limited. But, it, but it, it, it's the, cap, the, the part of the challenge of, of this problem with homelessness, of this challenge with homelessness, is that it's not solely the city's responsibility. We have different actors in this, in this, in this movie, <laughs> one being the county, one being the state. And so the challenge is trying to get everyone to get on the same page. And so in the pro right now, we're in the process of developing uh, uh, the next five-year plan on homelessness. The first five-year plan obviously didn't work because we're where we are. But what I can tell you the difference is this time around, the first five-year plan and homelessness took place some time back. They were just thinking about housing, housing, housing. We need to build more housing. I think that's part of the solution, or that's one of the solutions. But they didn't take into account what happens in between, between the homeless and housing. And that's what we need to start thinking about as a city, is what are we willing to do in that space in between to try to alleviate some of the suffering and the stuff we see on the street. Because it's not working. Okay. So with that, I'll sit down. I'll be here a little while. The calm <laughs> project, you know, we know it to be comms. Um, the sad thing is um, the two condo complexes, which we call uh, Santa Teresa and Chantilly, they refuse to sign the contract that the city demanding they sign with us. So they are not part of it. So it's really just Ebony de Spagna, Las Paseos, and Metcalf. Um, it's going well. It, it's taken hundreds of hours because I'm knocking on a lot of doors. So I really could use some help. Thank you. You got two. You enjoyed me as I'm not going to do The two, the two people that you guys sent. I referred someone. Yeah, yesterday. and he, and yeah, and he called me phone. today. Okay. Picked up the contract, and he's all for it. He's a strategic home. And the other one already, you know, is already lined up to have it before the end of the year. So it's really good news. 
it's, it's happening. Um, we've gotten really good uh, equipment out there, and it's working. All I can say is um, Metcalf, we have someone there that's, and they don't, anyone going out there is going door to door is not representing the Safer San Jose. I'm making that statement right here. But if any one of you want to knock on doors, it's totally up to you. Just refer to safersj.com and request a camp. And basically, it's really easy to figure out who's strategic. If you got an end of a cul-de-sac, cul you know, you can shoot a license plate reader and go down, you know, as they're coming into the uh, court. And if you have a T street, I just want to make this a point. If this is a street here, and this is a, and this is a street here, and you, and you went straight down the street and you ran into a driveway, this house, that driveway, is a great house. That house caught a burglar last week, a week ago today. All right, a license plate on Stillwater. So, um, I really want to emphasize help, and not that you're representing Safer San Jose. Okay. So if you feel, be honest with you, Los Paseos is lacking. Uh, Avenida Espana, we need about 23 more homes, and we'll have all the strategic points, and then we're going to go into phase two. Instead of waiting for everyone, we're going like Metcalf only needs a few more, and they're going to go to phase two. Phase one is license plate readers, two don'ts. Phase two is just two don'ts. Much cheaper to do. You don't need an expensive NDR, and we're going to just you know put them in the middle of the street. So people think, oh, I'm in the middle of the street. It doesn't matter. Middle of the streets is phase two. So please, if you haven't signed up, sign up. It doesn't hurt anything. And if you know of a neighbor that's at the end of a cul-de-sac, beginning of a court as you pull in, even if it's two or three horse, uh, houses in, you know, two or three houses in, if, you, if we shoot it as they turn in, we got them. All right? That's one thing I wanted to say. The, um, we're going to start, hopefully, first quarter, start selling these cameras, um, not safe for San Jose. The contractor that's actually installing is going to take on that because we don't want to get into buying and selling. He's going to sell these, and it's going to be 50% off, and that will be rolled out first quarter next year. Um, signs. Oh, yeah, the signs. Uh, Laura Wells said uh, maybe about 25% <coughs> of the signs. We have 100 light posts that are going to get signs. About 25 of them will be done before the end of the year. So don't get disappointed if you don't see them in your neighborhood. Laura has a big job to do, and she's the, uh, one of the person with DOT. That's when you doing say that. signs, you mean that this neighborhood Yeah, is yeah, to surveillance it. with a police badge and all that. Um, two crimes last week, Stillwater. Um, this morning early at 2.30 in the morning, I got woken up. Uh, van, electric, electrical van, massive amount of money stolen, and the police are on it, and they just can't believe the incredible pictures. They already know the suspect because it was his car, he used his car. So both crimes now, they use their own car from what we know. And I want you to, don't be disappointed if you don't hear anything on next door, because some of these things take six months or a year, because they're just building a case, and it might be a big thing you hear in a year or two. Did I, did I cover things, Steve? Did I? Uh, George, oh, George and Steve. Right, stand up real quick. <laughs> two other board members, George the treasurer, and Steve Nelson. Well, you know, we're trying not to, we're going to make a big announcement in January. We're going to have a, we're going to have a, um, yeah, it's always a secret. You know, you got to keep it. You know, that's, that's my middle name, according to some people. Yeah. I don't care. So, strategically, you're, you're getting close to the numbers you needed to have done then, correct? On the yeah, corner? yeah, I, I, yeah, we're, we're going to, I didn't think we'd hit 300, um, but we might hit 300 because we have, um, just the negotiations and Western Digital donated 300 drive that saved us 30,000 and so forth. So it, I think we're going to get cl pretty close to 300 homes. Good. Yes. What about uh, one, one question that I'm out of here? What about the uh, end of cul de sacs, too? Yeah. Like in yeah. general, there's a lot of end of that house, end of this courts. Like yeah, the cul de sac, <laughs> any, any house there, only one house we need. The best one is the one right down the middle that looks down the street. But some of the houses some of the, the houses street. don't have a house on That's the cul-de-sac. Right. So the one as you go down the cul-de-sac, the one on the right, because when a car turns, you zap and you get the license plate as it turns. But can I've done it on the <coughs> left also. Can it go on the on a light post? No. It I wish uh, I'd give all the money to the city and say do it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be <coughs> spending all my time. Is that it? Thank no. you. Yeah. One more question. The stop program. Can you up this oh. we, we we did some things in the Knob Hill here, and I want to make okay. sure people know so, about that. Real quick. Okay, real quick. The shopping center here, Silicon uh, Center, 
Village Shopping Center. Consists of three landlords. 76 Gas Station, corporately owned by somewhere in LA, the mall ROIC that most people know, and then Sue, a Chinese lady that owns those two um, medical buildings. All three of them have signed up with the STOP program, and that is doing very well. Um, even yeah, what the is it? Knew about it. What is oh, the STOP program. If someone is causing a problem, like, you know, making you scared to go shopping or stealing something or whatever, um, if they can call the security and security will hold them there until the police come, they'll tag them and write up their name and put them in the STOP program. They're not allowed to come back on that premise um, again. And um, if they do, then they get tagged again. So many tags, you get a warrant for your arrest. Someone like uh, Cheyenne, everyone knows they call him Sean. He's not allowed there, if you notice. It hit, when Cheyenne's not around, I'm just sorry, I'll say it right now, and it's gone video, it, it tones down a lot of the criminal activity. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people think he's harmless, but uh, he, he, he's done his share. That's yep. all I can say. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Oh, and I got business cards, too, if anyone I'll put a comment out there. I have the, okay. camera, the cameras at my house, and they did a really professional Thanks. Easy installation, they do a great job, and I'm really glad. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.